Ladies, what's the name? The Miracles. First prize, two tickets to Lewis. Best of luck. He's so fine. I wish he were mine. Uh, the thing that's uh, most uh, engaging, I guess, uh, their search for something in their lives, in several cases, uh, it's a miracle. And uh, it's, it's what could go wrong. It's really interesting to see somebody step out into the world an expectation for a miracle and see what they find. And I think that uh, the idea of Lourdes, which is uh, a place where people have expectations of something, not necessarily a miracle, uh, that is interesting too. So the combination of, a, of, I suppose somebody called it a road movie, of getting them out of the house on the road uh, to see what would happen, which is a classic, um, classically what a, a, a road movie is. People go on a voyage of discovery. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that was interesting to, to look at it that way. Welcome to Lourdes. Piers, I am sharing with you. <laughs> Is there only one bed? You yeah, I wouldn't you trust. I am not my mother. Ain't that the truth? Oh! Ah! We're ready. I'm not. Now, the film explores the theme of miracles and their connection to human belief and consciousness. How did you approach capturing and visualizing these elements on screen? Were there any specific techniques or stylistic choices you made to enhance the audience engagement with the concept of miracles? It's all through character. I mean, there's no there's no uh, sensational event. Uh, it's all through character uh, engagement um, with Lourdes uh, and with each other and with their own spirituality. Um, and each of them has a uh, brings with them um, problems uh, to uh, Lourdes, problems that they're not in the mood to acknowledge or recognize. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, that's that's where the dramatic engagement uh, takes place, when they start to uh, acknowledge that there is something to look at here. And in the context of Lourdes, that's made possible, because Lourdes has that effect, uh, I believe, uh, on people, uh, even the non-believers, uh, people who go there, they find that the the, the Lourdes effect kind of sets in. They all have a, they all, they all feel something, and um, they all. Uh, I think the non-believers in particular are very impressed to be in the in an atmosphere of such the kind of collective spirituality. I think they they get quite um, uh, people I've spoken to have, who've been quite moved by that, um, mm. and um, uh, it it makes them think about themselves and and their and their spirituality. And could you share any insights into the casting process for the Miracle Club? What qualities were you looking for in the actors? How did they contribute to the overall portrayal of the characters in the story? I mean, it seems like you're one of the luckiest directors because you get to work with this all-star cast. Well, I am. Uh, and um, they, they were given to me, uh, if you like. Uh, Kathy Bates and Maggie Smith were attached to this project a very long time ago. And um, uh, Laura Linney only became attached uh, uh, quite recently during my period of engagement. And um, so I was uh, doubly lucky in that I didn't have to go out and find uh, mm -hmm. Maggie Smith and Kathy Bates. They were attached to the project. So when I got Involved, I went and talked to them uh, about the about the story and about um, how they saw it and how, how I saw it. Um, I think it's unusual uh, to have uh, such major stars so well cast. I think they 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 were the reason they wanted to do it was because they they felt a connection with these characters, yeah. and they really were. They really did have a connection with these characters. Um, uh, and not just as professional actors who could turn around and, uh, you know, turn the hand to whatever character is thrown at them. Uh, it wasn't really like that. They 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 felt uh, a, a real engagement with the with the issues uh, and with the characters. And uh, I think they were all intrigued as well by by the experience of the idea of Lourdes. 
uh, as well. And the idea of the pilgrimage. And I like that idea. We were just talking to somebody else earlier and the uh, thing of the road movie came up and it suddenly reminded me that um, I remember thinking about the film of Thelma and Louise, Ridley Scott's film uh, years ago, which was a very, very different kind of film. But uh, those women really wanted to get out of the house so that they could have an experience they didn't know what the experience was going to be. They just needed, they had to get out from under the husbands and get out from under the household demands and the kids and everything and, uh, and get on the road. And in a way, this, that's what these are doing. They're getting on the road. They have, an, uh, they have a, a, a different from road movies. They do have an end in sight. They do have a location in sight, which is Lourdes. And they know that something will happen there. That's the abstract thing. They, they know that something will happen there. Some of them believe think it's going to be a miracle, but I wonder how seriously they believe that. Um, and, uh, but in any case, they do. Uh, I, think, um, the, I think Dolly probably really, Dolly really needs it. And um, Eileen really wants it. Um, but Eileen is reminded of reality when she's going home on the bus when the uh, uh, Laura Linney character says to her, uh, have you gone to see a doctor about the, about the lump on your breast? And she says, no, I went to Lourdes. That's what I went to, I went to Lourdes. So it's like, uh, you know, it's confirmation, you know, if ever you wanted it, that she really did go for expecting something to happen. And she's decided very quickly that something didn't happen. I don't know how she manages to sort of get from that to that. But uh, Laura Linney says, you know, well, now you need to go and see a doctor. Okay. That's all very well about miracles. But now you need to go and see a doctor. Seeing the movie yesterday, I enjoyed it so much. I enjoyed the, the pacing, the subject matter. Um, you could tell that this film uh, took a, it seemed like it took a long time to really find, to, to execute it just right. Um, you know everything about the film in every aspect it just it, it hits you why it's, it's a great it's definitely a road movie but it's also a, a good popcorn movie i wouldn't even i wouldn't consider it a religious movie it's good for everyone it takes both sides of the of the question and it handles it very very well um what do you hope viewers will take away from the miracle club after after watching it are there any specific messages or emotions you aim to convey through the film of course there isn't a message uh uh um it's a it's a series of experiences that these characters have, which um, are life affirming. You know they are. Let's face it. Uh, uh, you know everybody. You know a lot of people have have uh, similar issues, and uh, it's quite nice to see older people with all their experience of life engaging with them. Uh, and I think that's nice. Uh, and uh, there's. Um, as, as the Maggie Smith character says later, you know, there's always hope, isn't there? There's always yeah. hope. And, and of course, there has to be a hope, otherwise you can't you can't engage, you can't think about changing unless you really have this, some kind of hope. So I think uh, uh, that's in the story. I don't think it's a message I'd like to, I wouldn't like to feel that we were giving off messages, but I think um, I love to see the characters bump into each other and engage and uh, out of that comes you know these uh, these these ideas about spirituality and hope and reconciliation which are all oh, big themes and i couldn't really deal with those in a film you know you you know you couldn't um but i do know i grew up a catholic i grew up in a very intense catholic atmosphere so i feel very comfortable about all that stuff right. and uh, uh to, to the point where i don't even feel I have to engage with it and maybe if I had made the film when I was much younger I'd have too much attitude uh which I I I, I didn't have I don't have now about religious people or priests or whatever um or people who want to engage in that way uh, everybody has their own way of doing things I could feel in the direction of this is that you felt very comfortable with the subject matter and which is great because that's what people want people need a very honest perspective um, whenever I have the opportunity to speak to a director, I always love the dialogue of movie magic, things that just kind of come from somewhere else that may have helped uh, spark something in the movie that is of a uh, magic or miracle. Well, I think I would say uh, that the ex there, there are four women in a room uh, when they talk about abortion and they talk about uh, giving birth. 
and they talk about what it means to, uh, to have a child. Uh, and, and I think uh, when those four women got into that room, I, I, it was a nightmare for me. I thought it was going to be a nightmare uh, to have uh, all those pages of dialogue and all those difficult issues and those four amazing actors. And we had to shoot it in the day. You know, we had to, we had to, we had to complete. Uh, and uh, it was the ma magic there was um, in uh, the characters all kind of uh, coming to uh, an ins uh, of all women who have, uh, well, Agnes hasn't had children, the Agnes of Casey hasn't had children, they're all, all uh, and, and, and Kathy Bates hasn't had children, but they, they understand. Uh, the issues that confront women and the expression of that in that scene was amazing. Phenomenal, and, uh, phenomenal scene, definitely. To be in that, to be in that room and, uh, and have those women uh, act out those, uh, those issues and those characters was uh, extraordinary. And uh, it was, uh, it was um, I felt pretty humble. I didn't feel like a director there at all. I just felt like just a privileged person, really, to be right. there. That's amazing. And that's how you feel as an audience member, because um, watching the film, I was just like, wow, like this is like, I feel privileged to be watching some of these scenes because we've never been able to see. A lot of times when you have these this amount of amazing actors in a room, it's a train wreck. You don't see that here. You see the such grace in in allowing and the communication. It's It's so well done. I could I could stay here an hour talking about just the the actors, but what I would like to uh, get some information on is the color palettes and the colorization in the movies, what they're wearing. Um, how did how did it, how did you work on that? Is that something you work very strong with the costume designer, or because it's a it's really beautiful and you see you see the story through the color. The, the costume designer uh, and I um, uh, well we went through a lot of pictures of the period. And uh, it, surprised, it surprised me because I know the period very well. Uh, it's my period, if you like. Uh, but I was quite surprised how much color there was uh, there in the cars and in the costumes uh, and on the streets of Dublin at the time. And uh, so she, she very much wanted to go with that. And uh, But also, you know, significantly, the characters uh, who were in the uh, forming a group to sing, mm -hmm. uh, she wanted them to to uh she imagined you know the, the kathy bates character going to the haberdasheries uh that we talked about that our mothers used to go to in dublin and going in there and seeing all these rolls of material and just going oh that'll be lovely <laughs> we'll have something that, that one there'll be lovely i'll do you a good deal mrs i'll do you if the three characters i'll give you for the, for the three dresses you want to make, I'll give you a special deal. You know, all that kind of thing. So, so, so that was wonderful. And the, the American arriving in Ireland uh, had to have something special because when all the Americans arrived over, all my family, uh, my relations went to America uh, um, and they were always coming back uh, uh, in the 50s. And uh, they were always wearing mad clothes. And we used to get sent a box of clothes every year. At Christmas time, they send the boxes, hand me downs, wow. and they were so, they were always really bright and <laughs> colourful. And uh, so, uh, anyway, the Kathy, the uh, Laura Looney character, you know, we wanted to ha have her really be a bit intimidating, uh, bright and colourful, and a bit peacocky and and American, and and uh, and uh, I don't care what you think, I am wearing this yellow coat, mm -hmm. and. Uh, so you know she wasn't going to she was going to stand out uh, and 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 i you know she knows she's going to stand out and she doesn't mind uh and it's in their face a little bit you know back off a bit you know they're they're almost thinking and uh and then um, the kathy bates character yeah she doesn't get she doesn't get to wear such such a bright clothes she was uh, much more down to earth and uh, realistic, but the the, um, the the design, the designer and I also he's not he's older but not as old as me, but he knows the period really well, and we looked at you know all the colours that we liked 
when we went into those homes and that we grew up in, uh, the wallpapers and the kitchen units and uh, and all of that. And uh, it was just a question of uh, making it so that it was um, it it would uh, the color palette that wouldn't feel like it was all over the place. Right. That it was uh, it was a world. You know, it was a distinctive world. And, and once you got into the color of the world, then everything belonged in it, even though it might have been a little bit too colorful. Uh, it, it was from there, from that time, from the day, uh, and it belonged. Uh, and you just had to find, a, as you say, a kind of palette that could um, encompass it, really. You don't come to Lourdes for a miracle, Eileen. You come for the strength to go on when there is no miracle. You're still alive. <laughs> Just about. And there's always hope. Peace. That's what I hope for. I think I had me a miracle. What? I actually missed you.